Hey, Ellen. Hey there, how are you? Are you ready to take minutes, Ellen? Yeah, just give me a second. It took a really long time for my phone to find the link. There's, I have so many emails with Zooms in it that... Uh -huh. uh, now, now I was searching for Gail, but it actually is Bradbury that you have to look for. Oh, okay, yep. All right, I think I'm good, thank you. Ellen, Rebecca and Beth both excused. Thank you. Everyone right. else was here. Okay. Can well, we'll you call the meeting for What? Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. As I mentioned before, Ellen wasn't in. Um, our chairman and vice chairman are not with us tonight and Gail's asked me to chair the meeting. So here we go. Um, let's see, everyone's here except for Elizabeth and um, and um, Rebecca. So you can see that, Ellen, right? Yep. Okay. Um, no citizens have signed on, so we'll skip to Roman numeral four and uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of um, December 14th. So move. Is there a second? Second. Any corrections, additions, changes, comments? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, uh, raise your hands and say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Gail, do we have any correspondence? Um, the only thing was the schedule for the uh, budget hearings with the Finance Committee. And I think I mentioned, mentioned that we scheduled for March 11th right. at 3.30. And, and we can't attend, only you can attend, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, they may set up some kind of a Zoom link that you could join in, but I haven't heard any more about that. Okay. All right. Anything else? That was it. Okay, thank you. Carol, do you have a treasures report for us? Okay. Um... Another month, this is not a lot coming and going. There is one little um, anomaly in that apparently back in July or August, whenever I was done with the last year, I neglected to change the numbers in the left hand column, which says budget, fiscal year 2021. But I was using the fiscal year 2019 20. Figures. I never ended up changing them over in the format of the, the new budget. So for September through now, or, or through no, uh, December, through November, yeah. um, they have those the wrong figures in there. I have changed it to the correct figures for this current fiscal year, but it doesn't change anything about the data in the report, um, the bottom line on the... Uh, bank account or the comings and goings of the uh, the money. It's just um, the reference figures there for what amount we have to work with. So going forward from here, um, they will actually reflect the current fiscal year. Um, I guess in the confusion of trying to figure out the end of last year's fiscal year, I never ended up making that change. But um, in any case, we've got that straightened out and everything else is Ordinary imbalances and no donations, nothing unusual. Okay, anyone have any questions for Carol? Okay, hearing none, now we'll go, go on to Gail's report. Okay. Uh, oh, let me bring this up again. I met with the mayor to discuss the library's proposed budget. My focus was on staffing and the library assistance. 
he asked whether I would give up to offset the increase, which is a difficult question to answer since I have not increased any of the other line items in several years. I reluctantly said I would give up the requested increase to the book budget. <clears throat> I also met with human resources before meeting with the mayor to discuss the minimum wage increase and how it will impact the library assistant. Um, he confirmed the uh, increases coming to the state and felt that I was in line asking for the increase we asked for. The mayor's budget is due to town council in early March and we will meet with the finance committee on March 11 at three, three o'clock? Yes, three o'clock p.m. <clears throat> the Rotary Club is once again providing masks, face shields and gowns to the community organizations that need them. They dropped off a box of adult and kid masks for each library today. Uh, no shield or gown, they may not have gotten those in this order. We have seen a number of Connecticut libraries close again to the public including Groton, due to the uptick in COVID cases. We are trying to remain open and have amended our policies in the interest of safety. Patrons are still allowed to use the computers, but they're limited to one hour per day, and staff will no longer help patrons at the computer. If a patron needs help, staff will try to troubleshoot with them from behind the plexiglass shield. Several Groton residents have come in to use our facility due to the closure of Groton. And we're getting some pushback on the one hour computer limit and patrons sometimes do not keep their masks in place. But overall it has worked. We continue to provide curbside for those who want it and they average about 10 to 12 requests a week between both libraries. Uh, I'll just add, we had, I had a, a Lion Zoom meeting today and several of the libraries have talked about pushback that they're getting from their patrons, patrons that don't want to wear the mask, they're um, claiming it's all a hoax or um, they have a medical reason for not using it. And we were all exchanging ideas on how to respond to those kind of uh, comments and got some good feedback. Uh, one library director told the patron who said he wasn't gonna wear a mask um, and, and you can't make me. <laughs> The director said, no, I can't make you, but I don't have to provide service. You'll have to use curbside. So the, the, the libraries are coming up with strategies on how to deal with these patrons who don't want to abide by the rules, if you will. Wow. Um, we did have another positive case in the library just before Christmas. And unfortunately, their patron has since passed away. Um, he was someone who came in multiple times a week to use a computer, didn't have a computer at home, needed help um, getting testing and, and things of that sort. And, you know, we did what we could to help him, but obviously, it wasn't enough. We're coming to the end of our grant for the coding software from Prenda. We've decided not to purchase it at this time, but Stacy and Elaine plan to continue with coding activities. We have a collection of Ozobots and Spheros that can be borrowed and they will provide ideas of things that can be done at home with them. 
I'll also add that we recently uh, made available two kilowatt kits that were donated to the library by Eversource. Um, if, you, if you've read anything about them, the kit includes a energy mo monitor that you can use throughout your house to determine how much energy your appliances and plugs and um, equipment are using. And the idea is to help learn ways to save money on your electric costs. And those have been made available now to the public, one at each library. And the building news, uh, work on the HVAC at Bill has been completed almost. <laughs> I, I think we're going to be tweaking it for a while until we get all of the thermostats right. Uh, they're either too hot or too cold. They've come back twice now to adjust things and we'll get there. It's just going to take time. And with the cold weather, uh, it reacts a little differently. We'll have to see how what happens on a warm day and then a cold day and, and how we're going to adjust accordingly. Fortunately for us, the cold weather held off during the uh, install, which was a big help to us. And that's my report. Okay, any questions for Gail? Um, Gail, I do have one um, comment. I don't know if you've heard of these. Um, there are um, programs called um, terminal emulators. They're like um, one of them is a team viewer, which might um, allow you to have the library assistants like work at their computer and still help patrons even without you know being able to socially distance. Like, like be like in a totally different room if they would need help. Yes, we've, we've talked about those. And um, Lion also has talked about trying to come up with a system that we could all use that would be the same, uh, you know, the same software kind of standardized throughout Lion. Um, haven't done anything on that yet, but we have looked at it. And it is a good um, possible solution for helping people. What, what we're doing now is Lisa or Elaine will try to help somebody if they can do it from behind the plexiglass shield. So if a patron comes to the desk with a phone or a tablet, they will work with them through the shield if they can. So we're we are trying to find ways to help people. Anyone else? Cheryl, anything else? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, moving along, the friends um, under uh, the committee reports, the friends met uh, on January 14th, had an executive board meeting um, and a regular general membership meeting. Um, there was no additional members that attended the general meeting except for the executive board. Um, that frequently happens. They, they talked um, about creating a friend's Facebook page and they're looking to increase their uh, presence on social media. Um, they're looking, they're also looking um, at a contact management system, doing um, like the books and more and other things uh, as an online option. Um, they're going to be running a buy one, get one free sale in February from February 22nd to February 27th. So you might want to mark those dates. Um, Believe it or not, we're getting, at least in Gail's theory, we're getting a fair amount of uh, attendance because every Thursday when Blair and Eileen go to um, check the books, uh, there's definitely holes that uh, need to be filled. So that's a, that's a good sign. Um, 
they sent out the membership dues. They've gotten 60 out of 150 back already. They're working on a, a logo for the book sale. So when they publish it, here's, here's what it looks like. Here's one of the champ or possible solutions for the, for the book sale. Um, they're working on nominations for next year as well as, as we are. And that's uh, about it. Unless Gail has something to. No, that's good. Good, good. John, I did have a question. Sure. I was contacted by somebody through the Ledger Community Forum asking me why they couldn't pay online for friends. I don't know if they thought because I was a library commissioner, I would have, I would know. But she was exasperated. She said, well, the only way I can renew my membership is by sending a check and I'm going to forget like I always do. Yeah, um, that's, as you know, that's an expensive thing for a group to, to do. We don't have our own website. Yeah. The website that the friends have is, you know, is off the uh, library website. And have so you guys talked about like taking Square or anything like that? They do. I mean, you do at the book sales. You take Square, but for membership, for membership renewal, she was saying. Good question. I, I suppose we could have them call. Because the treasurer doesn't always have the. Yeah, I don't know the ins and outs. It was just very random, and I was sort of like, "Why are you contacting me?" But <laughs> as, as a library commissioner, I figured I would pass it on. Well, I, I'll, I'll do that too. I'll pass it on. Thanks. <laughs> John, um, Sarah would be the one to ask. Sarah mm -hmm. to me. She would be oh, the Oh, Sarah one to is ask. really accessible. She's easy to reach. Yeah. So she, she's the one that set up the Square account. And she would know if there was a way to have it work for membership. Right. Well, I mean, they could call Sarah and she could enter it, I suppose. But. Well, they, they could possibly call the library and, because there's a, there's a square at each library. Oh, okay. Because we, we use it to uh, for the book sale. So uh, it's possible it could be done for membership if they call the library. They couldn't do okay. it online, but they could call and, and do it, possibly. All righty. I don't know for sure, so check with Sarah. We'll talk to them. Yeah, we can talk about that. Okay. Anything Thanks. else? Nope, thank you. Thank you. Um, next under committee reports is nominating, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to new business. Any old business that anyone wants to talk about? Silence is deafening. <laughs> okay, new business, election of officers. I have received the nominating committee, uh, which is composed of Rebecca. Um, and she has the following nominations for chair, Rebecca Nash, vice chair, Elizabeth Rumery, Recording Secretary Ellen Granger, Granger, and then Treasurer Carol Hans, all very familiar names. Um, I'll entertain. Are there any other nominations? I make a motion to close the floor to the nomination. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All in favor of the state as recommended by the nominating committee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. <laughs> any, yeah. Any other I just questions? had a question under secretary. <laughs> yes. Is there a stack of minutes somewhere for me to sign? Um, Patty is, is accepting them now without being signed because okay. of the pandemic. Because so I, I haven't stopped in since probably right. early in the summer. No, so I've been able to, 
to turn them in once okay, they're good. approved. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Anyone have anything else? Uh, just a quick question. What's the status of the uh, strategic plan? <laughs> well, we haven't done a whole lot with it other than what we did at the beginning. Um, dealing with the pandemic has been a challenge in itself. So um, it's been on my mind. I know that we haven't really acted on any of the, uh, the goals at, the, at this point, other than what we did initially. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. There a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Have a